In this movie, we'll see how to use live for recording live instruments or voice. We'll learn about routing, monitoring, and multi-track recording. Live has two basic views, session view and arrangement view. The two views are used for different stages of the creative process. Pressing the tab button toggles between session and arrangement views. Most of our work in this movie will take place in Live's arrangement view, seen here. The arrangement can be used just like a tape recorder. Your recordings can be played back at any time, starting from any point. When you're done, you can export your finished song. In Live, this is known as rendering. Let's hide Live's browser to make more room. This live set contains one empty audio track, which is currently titled One Audio. Let's prepare this track for recording. On the right, you'll see Live's mixer section. The Show Hide section of Live's mixer lets you see only what you need to see. Let's make the In Out section visible so we can tell each track where to look for input or incoming audio signals and outputs where to send audio signals to. The pair of input choosers in the In Out section show that our track is receiving audio from external channels 1 and 2. This is probably the computer's standard audio input, a built-in microphone or line in jack. The upper input chooser lets you select from among various input sources, external inputs, other tracks, or signals from rewire applications. The lower input chooser is where you can select from different input channels. For instance, if you have a multi-channel audio interface. We'll prepare live for the recording process by clicking the track's arm button. Once the track is armed, you'll see that its level meter shows the signal level of the track's input. This represents the volume of the sound that we're going to record. We usually want to hear what we're recording, and monitoring determines how we listen to the signals at our chosen track inputs. Using these three switches in the in out section, you can set the monitoring behavior of every audio and MIDI track individually. If you're monitoring directly, that is, through the audio interface, through an external mixing board, or through the air, choose off. Choose auto to monitor the input signal through live and live effects. You may experience latency here. For more information, check live's manual or the included lessons. It's important to record in sync so everything will later play in sync. The easiest way to record in sync is to use the built-in metronome. You can adjust the metronome's volume using the master track's Q volume control in the session view. We're now ready to record a take into the arrangement. First, press the control bar stop button twice to reset the arrangement position to the first sixteenth note of bar one, beat one. Now press the global record button. As on a multi-track tape machine, individual tracks can be armed for recording, and the global record button activates recording for the armed tracks. Finally, press the control bar's play button, or use the space bar, to begin recording. Test. One, two. To stop recording, press the stop button in the control bar. Press the stop button again to reset the arrangement to the first beat, and listen to your recording by pressing the play button. Test. One, two. If your recording was long enough, the arrangement may have started to scroll horizontally. To scroll the view backward or forward, or to zoom in or out, grab the beat time ruler along the top of the arrangement with the mouse. Vertical mouse movements zoom in and out. Horizontal movements scroll left and right. Playback and recording can start from anywhere in the song. You can set an Test. insert mark by clicking One, anywhere in the arrangement view, and the song will start playing from that point next time. One, two. You can also set up punch points. Drag the left and right edges of the loop brace to define the in and out points and activate the punch in and punch out switches in the control bar so that the recording only happens within a defined region.
The loop brace can also be used to set a section of the arrangement to be looped. You can set up a loop, record as many takes as you like, and Live will keep the audio recorded during each pass. When recording, it's often helpful to have a count in. This gives you a chance to prepare for a take before the recording actually begins. Open the Preferences via the Options menu on PC or Live menu on Mac and choose the Record Warp Launch tab. When the count in preference is set to any value other than none, Live will not begin recording until the count in is complete. Alternatively, you can have Live follow your counting instead of the other way around. With a 4 4 time signature, it takes four clicks on the tap button before Live starts playing or recording. Let's create a new track. Unfold the new track by clicking on the Unfold button in its title bar. Now we'll activate the new track's arm button. By pressing the Command key on a Mac or Control key on a PC, we can arm multiple tracks at once to record several band members, for instance. In our example, we've altered our input selection so that track 1 records input 1 as mono and track 2 records input 2 as mono. The tempo of your live set can be changed at any time, before, after, and even during recording. You could, for instance, cheat a bit by bringing down the tempo to record a complicated guitar solo and bringing it up again when you're finished. Remember, Live's Info View is a great resource that'll tell you about almost anything that your mouse moves over. Like other views in Live, it can be shown or hidden as needed just by clicking the triangular unfold button near its lower left corner. For more in-depth information, you'll want to watch the other movies on the site, check out the lessons, and log on to the Ableton Live forum.